Hey, what's up? So in this video, I want to talk about Tiffin DFX4 for photo. There's a video plugin as well, but I will talk about that in a different video later this month in March. Um, so yeah, I got this a week ago or so, and I did not yet <laughs> dive too deep into that application. It's really powerful, basically almost too much options. But there's something to it, like the old um, film stock simulation and stuff like that. That really works great in this application and Tiffin DFX4. Um, I basically like the basic editing inside of Lightroom 5. This is Lightroom 5. 6 will come out in the next few days, I think. So maybe I will update this. But it can only get better. So, uh, yeah. So, the basic editing I most likely, or fixing I most likely do inside of Lightroom 5. And um, yeah, I will quickly go through my workflow a little bit. Um, I don't want to uh, <laughs> waste too much of your time. So, yeah, most likely, you know, like the contrast or even, you know, daylight or push the um, white balance a bit more or not and stuff like that. I really like the shadows and highlights that actually works I would say better or different I, I like it a bit better right inside of um, Lightroom so uh, yeah I will do those kinds of uh, fixes uh, inside of Lightroom maybe not too much uh, I would go much further or um, you know depending on what to do or what look I want to have uh, right inside here so this is just even even quicker than usually just to have uh, something to show you know what would I do basically uh, you know just a little bit of edge sharpening by the way I, I'm pressing alt here to see what uh, what stuff I do uh, yeah something like that it's ISO 640 on a A7S, so nice reduction. No, not really. Maybe later on. I don't want to do any vignetting yet before I send it to um, different, yeah, DFX4. So yeah, that should be fine for now. I could do a little bit more here and there, but you get the idea. By the way, that's shot with the an all nice uh, 135 2.0 lens, a Soligor that's actually made by um, Tokina. Nice lens on a A7S full frame. Really like that lens. That really was it. Just a shot through a window. That that's why you see those reflection. I could go in and uh, stamp those out. Uh, yeah, I just uh, saw this. Uh, <laughs> took that snapshot and yeah really like that i have a few more shots here maybe i'll talk about those uh, later on like this one you might have seen those on my instagram feed or facebook or whatever <laughs> wherever this is actually shot uh, a few weeks back in 2014 or maybe even the year before uh with a uh, canon 60d and a sigma uh, 17 to 70. Yeah, that may, might be actually from uh, 2013 because I saw that lens and got the 70 to 50. Uh, anyway, back to this one. Um, yeah, and then I go to edit, right click, edit. And as you would like to do um, when you go to Photoshop or whatever, just click on that. Uh, yeah, basic settings, that's okay for me always uh, go with the uh, adjustment layer and for me as RGB is okay maybe you could maybe you could go to a pro photo if you work for print or whatever your workflow is or what your requirements are and there you go oh babe. <laughs> I had it open anyway so yeah and as you can see quite a lot of options here um the we have like the basic settings here all the rooms so to speak or uh, segments of the thing have a preview here and a nice thing is you can work with layers and that's really what i really like on this application as well you have like plant modes and you can go in and there you go um so the basic stuff you know you have the 
um, and I'll show you in a minute how you can save favorites. You can go in and, um, you know, do the same stuff, uh, like the plaques and the recovery. But that, I think, doesn't work as good or the same as you would do it in uh, Lightroom. So, uh, yeah, I go ahead and do that maybe a bit more and stuff like that but uh, but i go to back to this um, layer later on after i applied all kinds of stuff like you know just click here and i go in and yeah maybe film lab as you can see quite a not uh, nice stuff bleach bypass is always good i reduce maybe the settings here or you could choose uh -huh, you know you have so many options here uh, it's almost too much, <laughs> but um, yeah, I go in and select some basic, not so drastic settings first, and I go in. I could go in later on. Um, so next layer. Uh, this is also nice. All the filters. A friend of mine will do. Might do a test, you know, with the real filters and without, and put them in digitally and. We'll see how this goes. Um, really keen to see that. So I really like the Clemmer class. It uh, kind of adds a little bit of... You know, I'm not quite sure what, actually. <laughs> looks nice. Even though that lens actually really n looks nice and vintage already. It always goes... Um, another, adds another, you know, like um, <laughs> layer to it. Pro Mist is also good. Or whatever. You just have to play with it if you like that. You yeah, can add all kinds of uh, creds and filters and NDs and stuff like that and gels. It's, I didn't even uh, look too deep in those. Um, most likely I go with a little bit of haze and reduce you know, the settings a bit. You know, just, just a little bit. There you go. And another layer. You get the idea, you know, you add layers of stuff. Um, I will do veneering a little, little, little bit later. Ambient light is nice as well. Adds a little bit more. Yeah, <laughs> it, it acts a little bit different. It's not really like brightness or something like that. So really, really it's a nice uh, algorithm that really goes into it. You have like looks, uh, you know, new layer. Um, look presets. Uh, I really didn't dive too much in those. I played a little bit around, but yeah, you could use those. Um, but actually, I really like to um, work a little bit more on on the stuff uh, myself. So yeah, just click on that. Um, yeah, you have favorites. Um, that's how I save my most used stuff you know you can go in and save a favorite what's what what could we do uh, let's see i could go in and where is it <laughs> so many options oh boy image i think yeah detail there you go and um you know sharpen two maybe or maybe even three and just hit the star button and it uh, gets uh, into your favorites and there you go and uh, you can there it is um, add that later on so yeah and now I will go to and that's really one of the special things I think uh, in the film lab you have film stock I really like this quite a lot of uh, <laughs> as you can see presets and I already picked a few of my favorites um, like all the Kodak, uh, 3X, black and white, uh, Eastman double of you know all the black and white presets and then most likely um, you know change a little bit around or like the Polaroid um, you know color presets and I most likely push it down the aisle so to speak yeah, depending on where to go and what to have want um, yeah and you go 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 in and you know change stuff like uh, I'm most likely at or 
it would use crane. Sometimes it's a bit too much in my my taste for my taste. Uh, so you always could go in and change things around. So yeah, but most likely I let it let them as they are. Only change the crane. So now I would go back and add my final vignetting. Uh, there you go, there you have it. It's actually on the lens vignette and I have my preset here. And I could go in and change things around or just, you know, change the uh, overall opacity of that layer. And uh, I could go in and, you know, add some more glimmer class or reduce the bleach pie pass a bit more and so that's that's pretty nice and then now uh, i can go back on the develop settings and as soon as you click on those you you know basically bypass all the layers above but as soon as you click on the topmost layer you see the final image so to speak and can you know push things a little bit seeing what happens in the final image so um yeah you get the idea and just one quick step um the masking is really nice so i might add a, a curve uh curve 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 there you go to push up the contrast a bit more the shadows in there and of course it pushes uh, the whole image and now I'm just select that layer curves hit the mask and you have quite a lot of options here the easy mask actually is the interesting the most interesting of those um, I might do a little video for that alone you can you know select the background and the foreground especially if you have a model on the studio and stuff like that and change things quite dramatically and it's a really easy mask and works quite good but for now i do the basic you know uh, paint in or paint out the mask and the, the controls are almost like in photoshop you know uh, brush size uh, how soft the edges are and you know opacity and now i just you know kind of paint in the contrast here and you can see it's quite quite good works just like in photoshop and i really like that so um that's just you have the, the layer mask here that's just the basic idea of this application what you can do i might reduce the film stock look a bit more um yeah so you get the idea so the next or the last thing i could talk about is safe setup basically all the stuff you do here you can i already have quite a few uh setups you could save those setups and I call that, uh, yeah, well, maybe quick crate three or something like that. And the idea is to have like a basic crate that you always open up first, or if you have like a patch uh, processing and stuff like that, or go back and apply the same look to different charts or just have a start you know and switch between those uh, like you know this one is nice or you know test some stuff out like the black and white t-max eh, doesn't really work and the idea behind that is you can open those presets your own presets up and start with those and you know change things around well, for now i actually kind of like the quick crate with it and yeah that's basically it and then you just push that button here dfx will render this one out into a tiff 
and goes right back into Lightroom. And I might have to, yeah, and you can see the, um, the stuff here. I might have done the vignetting a little bit too much, so, um, but yeah, I basically could go in and, you know, make a little bit noise reduction if I like to, or even put in more vignetting or reduce the vignetting if I like that and make some other adjustments right inside of Lightroom. And the nice thing is, um, I just click on this one. Actually, it's not there yet. Yeah. There you go. There it is. Four stars, maybe. And if I go in and want to change the look, because, uh, like the vignetting is too much, just go in, add it in the FX4, and when you click edit original it actually opens up the fx and you have all your layers back and you can change stuff around like the vignetting it's too much i think um go in and hit that edit button and maybe i reduce the size a bit yeah you get the idea actually i think the vignette is in the film stock. Let's have a look. Vignette, there you go. There it is. And uh, that's what I said before. And so on. And then just hit the button again and uh, it updates the render um, so this is really nice this works back and forth and you can change actually looks again and after that I just export that chart and <laughs> upload it to wherever I want so you get a basic idea of DFX for there's much more uh, to it um, as soon as I had more time with it i might do another video uh, especially comparing it to what you could do in video because that actually works quite <laughs> quite the same for video so quite a powerful tool for each side of the uh, production so to speak if you have any questions let me know um, and i will use that application that photoshop or lightroom plugin uh, the next few weeks uh, for all my stuff i do in photo nowadays quite a lot more um, i'm actually not a photo guy at all <laughs> but it's so much fun to use the a7s and the nax6 with, that, with those uh, old prime lenses really enjoy that so you might see a bit more in this department and yeah as i said um, if you have any questions let me know and uh, see you in the next one peace out mm -hmm.